What is good? We're back. The NFL draft has come and went. And we're ready to bring you some of the biggest buys or highest risers from literally an hour after the NFL draft happened. So we haven't quite figured out where all these values are going to be, but from whatever, we know everything. We've already decided it's all set in stone. It's done. Let's have all of our rookie drafts like right now. Yeah, we've we've Psych, don't do that. We've knocked out a few rookie drafts, mocks, quick ones, some slow ones. Um, and we've seen some action and just from what we're uh, perceiving as which guys are rising and which guys may be some buys right now. Must buy without context or anything. Oh, we'll give you a little Go bit. Go do of it. Uh, right right off the rip. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna throw JJ McCarthy in there, right? Because we've we've yeah. got the answer. We didn't we didn't know how much smoke screen there was. It's actually kind of started fading as the draft went in. There was actually some talk of could this be another uh, Will Levis situation where he really fades out of there? But I didn't think that was the case. There was too much of a murderer's row, uh, and he landed in the best possible situation, probably out of anybody out there, except for maybe what Caleb Williams is potentially walking into, right? If it wasn't um, the Bears. You know, the Vikings is an awesome landing spot. Yeah. Whether whether he starts day one or it's his three games, half a season, or the full season, I don't even care. J.J. J. McCarthy has, I think, at this point, in 1.5 tight end premium, probably un- uh, unended uh, Brock Bowers. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he froggered him. Right. Yeah. And some people will argue with that, and that's fine. I don't, I don't think it's a crazy jump, but I think I, I've been on the clock now a few times. We've talked about it a bunch, and I think when when rubber meets the road, I'm clicking the JJ button, I think. Uh, it's just the tale of two landing spots, which I try not to get too caught up in, but this one's kind of tailor-made for a quarterback to come in and succeed. The other one's like you had a million holes, and, and hey, you took BPA. Right. But uh, when when does it pay off? We're not really sure. Still like the assets. Still a, a tear break in between Bowers and, and the next group of wide receivers, I believe. Uh, but J.J., uh, a big riser for me. Uh, not, not even a big riser. Just shored up and, and has climbed up. I think a, a, you know, Secured, a, risen. a pretty substantial mountain in Brock Bowers because you couldn't have talked me off of Brock Bowers you know, pre-draft. Right. Which it would be interesting to see how this changes. This is our pre this is our post combine pre NFL draft ADP. Brock Bowers going in startups at four oh five. JJ McCarthy two rounds later at six oh five. Right. So we'll get That's the startups gonna... back rolling here soon, but rookies were of the utmost importance. Mm. Uh but JJ, you could see here even in the rookie mock or in the rookie uh data here, one nine to to one seven. So I think McCarthy has firmly planted himself in the one seven uh range here, right? At least yeah, I you mean, the biggest tight end lover of all. You're gonna take McCarthy. I think that so. That's yeah. No, I I think you're right. I mean, it, it got part, to as a quarterback. It's one part McCarthy, but it's one part landing spot. I mean, mm-hmm. the weapons that he's got in front of him. JJ, Justin Jefferson has a sign yet. Yeah, everyone's just assuming. Well, I want to yeah. see some ink. I, m- okay. Money fixes all all issues. He's right? already turned down thirty million dollars. Well, he's more concerned about the quarterback. I'd have got him ten. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> was garage sale seven fifty marked down from ten. His contract went up uh, when when uh, sun, the sun god got his contract. But but back to McCarthy. I you know yeah JJ hasn't signed, but Brock Bowers doesn't have a quarterback right now, right? I mean, uh, or one that's going to target him. There's there's so many variables there that like you know Gardner Minshew or Aiden O'Connell. Uh, I think it's going to be in my opinion it's going to be Minshew, but even if it's O'Connell, like the targets to the tight end aren't weren't there and obviously Brock is a different speed it's a different if we're talking higher premium if we're talking two tight end starts maybe it's a lot closer but I I feel like I, I I'm I'm there with you if I'm in that spot and I'm putting putting rubber to the road I'm getting ready to hit the the click it's really hard yeah. to pass up JJ um over Brock now um and before it was I I, I didn't even think about it. in fact right. I don't even think JJ was in like the next two spots for me. He was yeah. down a little bit further just right. because he was harder to evaluate. But he got the draft capital. He got a great spot. He's got great tools around him. Uh, they obviously believe in him. The, the organization believes in him. So it's it, it's you, you can be stubborn and you can hold 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 the line. And I don't really think that's what 
this particular with Brock Bowers. That's not what I'm saying, but but in general, like I wasn't high on JJ. Now he's above Penix for me because of the landing spot. Right. He was below Penix prior to the draft. And that's what we do here. Right. Exactly. And and I would just add one more point to that is is it's not that it, that, that Brock doesn't have capable quarterbacks because I think either one of those guys could get it to him. He just they all he they have an, a Hall of Famer on one side, Jacoby Myers on the other, and a quarterback that I don't necessarily trust to facilitate getting it to all of those guys yeah. at once and build the relationship with where JJ is going into the situation to build, you know, a long relationship or bust because uh, there's there's a chance he will bust. Uh, but JJ rising up there for me. So I think the other two quarterbacks are got to be on this list as risers. And, and, you know, some people would say, hey, I'm not buying Penix. Hey, I'm not buying Knicks. But I, I like both of the spots that they go into. Uh, both good fits. Penix, you might have to wait a minute. Knicks, probably not, but but a good fit. Those guys were guys who were floating anywhere mid-second to sometimes late second in your super flex drafts. But those guys now have cemented end of first to early second at worst value, in my opinion, uh, because of the draft capital uh, and landing spots. Everybody was like, well, if, you know, they could go second round. They're, they're not. Well, the NFL told you different. They went with it. Uh, one's probably going to start right away. The other one's most likely sitting unless, of course, there's something wrong with Kirk. Uh, long term from plant foot ACL at 36. We don't know. He's probably fine. But plant yeah. foot ACL. worst case scenario, I think it's two years before you see Penix. Best case scenario, you week see one. Him, you see him week one or week six, week eight, because there's a hamstring now that's a that's attached to Kirk being hurt. And what you've now you've you've attached an insurance policy to the Falcons. They they were up a creek. Uh, now yeah. they don't want to be in that situation again. Right. Uh, you know. You know. This isn't really the same thing. But remember when. You know, uh, the Seahawks were in a situation because their running backs all got hurt. Well, then they went back the next year and drafted another running back in, in Charbonnet. So yep. just a little insurance policy. This is obviously quite a bit more capital. I'm not. But when you haven't had it and you're moving forward, it, it sucks to be right now because you're not improving your situation right away for the Atlanta Falcons to try to win right this minute. Right. But the longevity of things, this really, really could be a huge stepping stone for them to be uh very strong at that position for 15 years, 10 yeah. years. Right? Didn't the Falcons know that everyone already dislikes Penix, though? Right. I mean, what were they doing? So I think big risers there. You may not, those might not be buys for you, but I think the value of them just went up. So I, I'm not necessarily scared to buy uh, either one. And now you can come back, well, you buy Penix in, uh, next year. <laughs> yeah, for cheaper. <laughs> for cheaper. <laughs> Which you might be able to. That's a little bit of a maybe, gamble. Maybe or maybe if, he comes out. Maybe if somebody's really waning. But if you have well, the conviction on Penix, what, what are you doing? Hey, you yeah. said that that wouldn't happen with Michael Mayer. And, it, and now you can definitely. Get I, I said it wouldn't happen with any of them. And it just so happened to one of them. One of them. <laughs> All, the other two are fucking I can go get, awesome. I can go get Mayer cheaper yeah. than I could last year. And, and before this draft, it was still not the easiest thing in the world to just come up with Michael Mayer. He was still going in the 10th round of startups, at least in ours, and tight end premium. So yep. it wasn't a given. They just happened to take Brock Bowers. Uh, that could be checked off as just as reckless as taking Michael Penix if you're the Falcons, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so anyway. Maybe even more so, I mean, because it's a tight end position over quarterback position. I can tell you nine <laughs> times out of ten, that stupid philosophy of those first round tight ends to buy the next year for cheaper doesn't fucking work. So. Yeah. Well, you can buy Penix uh, cheaper next year for sure. <laughs> for Hit me in the comments. But Hit us up. I think let's, let's get going. I'll ch I want to chat. Let's chat. Stock up on on those two guys. Some of y'all owe us an apology. Some of y'all owe us an apology in the comments <laughs> about Michael Penix. Y'all are so mad. You know, and now we're doing this draft. That looks like the draft, at least the first round where Penix was. It looks, I mean, we had him there early on, and people were so mad. And I was like, oh, Casey's off his rocker. You know, everyone's mad at him. He must be wrong. And now look, your top 10 pick, mm. suck it. <laughs> Higher than McCarthy? Hit us in the comments and, and apologize. You what, if what you say you're sorry, McCarthy? I won't even be mad. What oh, I don't, you don't even have to apologize. Just I'd like an apology. Just but know you don't have to. I when just, that happened, I, I know all those. the polite thing to do. When that happened, I know that all those naysayers, they got a little lump in their throat. They're like, damn. They're like, I'm not going to comment on online, online anymore. But that helps the algorithm, so please hit me up. Hit me up in the comment section. And, and hit that. He still that sucks, and the Falcons are idiots. Can't help that. And it's like, ah, oh, maybe so. Put that in the comment section for maybe you boys. So. All right. You got anything, or we keep it moving? <laughs> no, we keep All right. Moving. Let's hit some positional uh, buys or risers. I think Ricky Pearsall, again, this might be uh, a negative <laughs> for some people, but this is, an, uh, you know. How could it be a negative? A first round wide receiver for 
a replacement for either Ayuk in the future or Debo in the future. And now you have a third wide receiver to deploy out there where you might not have necessarily had a strong um, slot player game in, game out. Uh, Jennings has been awesome for them in big third downs and in big spots and is a very good player. Uh, but, you know, now you have a potential replacement. You drafted him in the first round. Yep. He is, yeah, you know, I know the late breakout age or whatever, but everybody who is really it's into 20, the nuance. It's, it's only yellow. Everybody's into the nuance of, of film and evaluating prospects and not just looking at all those boxes. This guy's an absolute stud. Uh, CJ Stroud gave him the uh, ringing endorsement. We've gave him an endorsement. I didn't, I didn't think that he was going to get drafted this high, and now that he has, you got to bump him all the way up here. And is there... Say whatever you want about Kyle Shanahan, but is there a system that you want, you know, an offensive player in much more than than Sam Fran? Not really. So not really. again, yeah. you might have to wait a year, and I'm not saying you need to draft him at 112 if you don't want to. But uh, this is a huge riser. This is all the way from the third round up to potentially anywhere as high as two one, one twelve, two four. Right. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he his his landing spot for Slick Rick and probably the best highlight catch of all time or, yeah. or right up there. I mean, that catch is just insane. Everybody knows it, but but it's more so than just the highlight reel. The guy was the guy's uh, super talented and first round capital. I mean, fifth year option. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, hell, uh, hullabaloo. Is that a is, yeah? You can go uh, of of uh, Debo or Ayuk is moving or Debo is moving or blah blah blah. Point is, he's in a good system. He has the draft capital. I, I, you, uh, I think Jay, we all had him pretty high going in already. So talent wise, felt pretty good about him. Um, justifying that part of it with his first round capital, I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely taking the shot because, you know, you you look at Ayuk and in and, and, in San Francisco's offense, somebody gets somebody's the lead dog then another guy's the lead dog another and that might happen a little bit but i think the point is is he has potential to be that lead dog right. he has potential to win weeks maybe not game one of week one right but as he goes along as he develops he's there he's got enough talent and he's definitely a riser because what what did you say i think he was uh third round was that that's where we he was basically going all yeah. over the place and the mm -hmm. last time we talked about him me and austin uh, we had him kind of in that three one to three five must draft range, and now he's all the way up to high twos. And just making your your draft picks more valuable is yeah. what was what Ricky Pearsall is doing. So so big riser, big big buy for me. Yeah, and, uh, and pre pre NFL ADP three three in rookie drafts. Yeah, so huge 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 riser uh, right there for just uh, went. Uh, where two six? What is he went two. So that's two, a late. Seven. That's a late one, and, and one of the ones that we just did a, an episode. He's on. down the. He's down the right. list. He's down the you list. Gotta scroll down and find him. Up. I think you forgot about him. I think because he Big D brought him up. Oh, Pearsall. Oh, y'all were doing a mock wait, wait, offline. That was, that was a separate thing. Yeah. So, Sep core, as they say. But uh, yeah, th this is a guy who's going to be in probably inside your first half of the second round in in most. Why drafts? would people be upset? Because I can Debo, but they're gonna. Just because he One wasn't, of them is gone. just because he wasn't a guy who was projected in the first round, mm. he kind of came out of nowhere. The 49ers are reaching, yada mm. yada yada. But I think he would have been a top half of the second round guy. So the 49ers are had their 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 thumb on the pulse there, potentially, um, and went in and, and got the guy they wanted. Brandon Ayuk gave it the stamp of approval. He texted uh, Shanny and said, "I can't lie, that's a fire pick right there." Mm -hmm. CJ Stroud Stroud was a saying he's he does those little intangible things that Tank does that you can't really put into words. He just creates space. He just gets open. He, if it gets anywhere near him, he catches it. Um, he's he's hard to handle in a press situation. Now the other guy on there was saying that you could, you could, if you get your hand, I'm so sick of like yeah. you, could, you could watch a game and then somebody gets their hands on him and they have a hard time with him. Like the guy the Niners just drafted, by the way, uh, as their second or third round pick from Florida State, drawing a blank on his name. Uh, hard physical press corner. Got a hold of him and, and didn't didn't uh, didn't do well. You know who else didn't do well? Malik Neighbors didn't do well against uh, the dude from Florida State either. Um, so, uh, you know, I I thought he was a pretty physical guy. And watching him, he's certainly not afraid. He definitely doesn't need to buy a dog, but he probably has not one. Not afraid. I mean, he's got a chest tattoo, so he's, yeah. he's, so he's not pretty afraid. Ricky, big, big, big riser there. Let's <laughs> big keep it moving. Big dogs got to eat. So uh, medium dogs. Keon Coleman, perennially hated on, uh, but 
you gotta you gotta give him you gotta put some respect on his name, right? Yeah, you have to. I mean, Buffalo was the was the spot that people were like, well, the one nine one ten is going to be important now because who goes there? And then Keating uh, Coleman they never goes there. Saw and that they thought it was going to be AD Mitchell. They yeah. never Licking saw their chops. Keon yeah. Coleman coming. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, oh, oh. But I mean, again, it's still a good spot for a wide receiver. He. He was starting to drop because of, of of some things, but he's got talent. He's a, he's a talented, bigger dude. You know, he reminds me of um, of kind of like a, a, a really raw, uh, not exactly the same player, but a really raw DK, right? And DK is is doesn't have the same not speed. quite as fast. I was gonna say like Funchess maybe or uh, or the other guy that came from uh, Kelvin Benjamin. No, don't no? put that on him. No, no, please not. Kelvin that's was low. nice. So He's not that slow. Had a Carolina too. wide receiver uh, yeah. comp. I was trying to give him some love with DK, like, yeah. Um, but 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 point is, is that he's he's in a good spot. He's going to be in an offense where he's pro- he's going to be utilized. You know, uh, you know, you got Kincaid there. You've got um, uh, uh, Curtis, Curtis, and Shakir, Shakir and you know, it's uh, just like and, a point five Gabe Davis. You know. <laughs> he's, is he is he better than Gabe David? He just I, has to catch the ball, and he was I better think he's, than a, he's he's got more potential to become a number one than Gabe Davis. I miss the good old days when yeah. a, when a strong breakout age and a college dominator was all you needed. Yeah, you know. Well, then you know, just like analytics, they move the goalposts, and once they have a guy that they were all in on, and they lose, then they they have to figure out why. And and he's got the bad metric that Nikhil Harry had, and Harry, and sca- your hands are scares freezing. you off, and he doesn't separate on every route, and and you know uh, that's that's what you got to deal with. Now, right, you, you you kind of pointed out something of how you know he was kind of going down because of some red flags. This is one of those guys that's. I think the fantasy community was going down on them a lot more than the NFL community Correct. was going down. So if somebody's yeah. probably going to be wrong. If I have to guess, it's probably going to be the fantasy community. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Not to say that the NFL guys get it wrong all the time. There are some idiots up in there that are just there because of who they know and nepotism. And which what, that that you know. sentiment is spread a lot. But then we put it all the stock into draft capital, which is like them boys making the picks. You know? Right. And that just comes down again to statistics of, you know, that if you if you put them in these buckets and in these rounds and you invest more time and effort into them, they're going to get more chances, more opportunities to, I to blossom. It, I, I know, I know. I'm just, just being so a jerk. Keon Coleman has to get put back into rotation with everybody here <laughs> uh, and being probably in the top half of your second round again. He's going to an awesome landing spot where it's wide open. He they, he's something that they need. He's a different style of receiver. Um, and I'm I'm like I said, I was willing to take the shot on him, but I was willing to take the shot on him at two nine. Uh, I didn't see him going to the Bills. Mm-mm. Yeah. And now that he's at the Bills, you got to, like I said, put a little bit more respect back on his name. And Yeah, I and mean, I'll, he's not skyrocketing in the first round by any right. means, but he's definitely in that that first, those first few picks of the second, uh, first He's back on the, the board second. for sure and, yeah. and has, has my interest, right? So, yep. so big riser. Uh, Where did you just go in this last mock? The two, four? Two, Come over to the Patreon.coms and get in these mocks with us if you're interested. Come on. Um, all right, next guy on the list is a tight end, Ben Sinnott. Uh, he was my tight end three coming in. I had Jatavian Sanders ahead of him, but now we have to put uh, Sinnott, I think, right there firmly in the tight end two area. Athletic yeah, guy, uh, gets good capital, and goes to a spot that's pretty wide open. Now, they do have Zach Ertz, older guy, and, and maybe you don't even get Sinnott to the full exposure. Maybe you do see him as a little bit more of a fullback and, and moving around a little bit more year one. And that, that's what he can be. He's a, he's a queen on the chessboard. I've said this multiple times. Uh, and uh, it almost sounds like a slight, but then when you but finish it's not, the statement, but, but it's, the uh, queen's it's a, a quite a compliment. You can do whatever you want with, yeah. the, with the queen. Um, and Senate can do so much for you. You just have to have the creativity to use them and the willingness to use them. We see this all the time with guys, you know, Gibson, Antonio Gibson and Pollard and guys that could be these chess pieces and moved in the backfield and all that. And they never do it. There's only certain coordinators that can do it. Senate should be used at least it doesn't need to be all the time just throw a wrinkle in there from time to time with him and and give him different alignments to get him the ball because he's very good in space he's a very good receiver he can block a little bit just a little undersized um so end of the second round i'm buying in on all this this is a fourth round guy i I talked about this with jb when we did i said this guy's going to be a riser when we're done and here we are here it is yep no, you're right. You're right on cue. I mean, Senate is you've got Ertz there. But remember, Ertz didn't sign until late in the season with mm-hmm. uh, with the team. And, and he was injured the year before and the year before. And, you know, so so there's 
there's opportunity there for him. You saw him at the combine. I he's think also he, 32, I think. So yeah, he's old, he's older. I mean, he's a tight so he's end. 40. So there's 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 some stuff he's there. He's always but, in like eight years all of a sudden. Once well, you're 31, guys. you're 40. Yeah. No, I mean Larry <laughs> Fitz was good for you know till he's like 35, six. Well, Larry Fitz is one of one, Jerry sure. Rice, but there'll so. be another Keenan maybe. So I'm Could gonna, be, yeah. But but point is, is that there's opportunity there in Washington for him. Um, you know, I was a big. Uh, stasher of Cole Turner, but I think that, sure. you know, I think, and I, and I'm not against still stashing or, or keeping him on my taxi squad, but, but with Senate there now, I, I feel like there, the, there's going to be competition and, and I feel really good about, and like you said, he was fourth, fifth round capital. Yeah. He's, he's up here in the four, second. six. Four, I don't, oh, come on. Let me hit it. Let me hit it. Yeah. It must have been while you were <laughs> feel so good when he jokes <laughs> yeah so he was middle middle end of the uh, of the fourth round i i could see him easily like you were saying uh popping into the second round uh capital and uh and, and possibly go further you know like right after the draft saturday draft just ended we're doing the show um but and two months from now, three months from now, training camp happens, things start to happen. Who who knows where his draft capital will be, but I can guarantee you it's going to be a lot higher than uh, mid, middle fourth round uh, uh, rookie startup, so or rookie pick. A hundred percent. So Senate moving up, big big buy for me right right at this minute. Again, we got to figure out where all these landing spots fit and and average out and, and all that jazz. But first look at this. Uh, <laughs> Senate uh, off the rip mm. is mm. <laughs> is. I feel like all that jazz should probably. Oh, be please give it. Fucking on the board too. <laughs> all that jazz. We got jazz hands. So. <laughs> give it to me. Uh, uh, Jermaine Burton, another huge riser right here, right? Yeah. He he's he's going to be shooting up into the back half of that second round. I think in a lot of rookie drafts right now. We've done a few, and he hasn't, but he's buried deep in the ADP sleeper. Yeah. You know, if if it's crazy, if if. If you don't have those guys in the ADP, right, the mindset of people drafting will forget somebody like a Burton who wasn't a hot name to start with. So you do have to scroll kind of far down, but that will be changing soon. He will be hopping up just like we talked about Persall, right. and and that will that will self correct. And I believe you'll be seeing Burton uh, in in the two two eights two nines. Yeah, easy. I mean, you know, you maybe even maybe even before like some people are probably going to want him over Keon Coleman and, and Leggett because they're just out on them uh, because of their red flags. Now, there's some off the field stuff with Burton that might have kept him out. But right. anyway, I'll, I'll let you go. No, I, I, I'm i agreeing with you. But it, it's it's also, again, it's scenario that we got going on there. We've got uh, we've got a history of Burrow. We've got a history of Boyd, who was who was kind of the three in that uh in that type of offense producing um some decent numbers but higgins contract year possibly wants to be traded whatever's going to happen there i mean the upside in in burton is is pretty uh pretty easy to see i think if you if you you don't really have to squint right like right. and 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 like you said i don't think he was high on a lot of people's radars and so your adp on your sleeper or any of the other apps that you use it's probably going to be a little bit lower but as we move closer to uh to summer as, as some of the the north and uh and you know where my my normal place you know washington once the sun comes out around you know june july um you know we're, we're gonna see that that draft position rise and and uh he's a player that i think can uh definitely complement uh chase and and perform in that offense so a hundred percent. And real quick, I just want to read you something and give Matt Harmon all the credit in the world here. There's a lot of really smart guys out here who were hyping Burton up off the field. If he didn't have that, could have been a higher potential guy. But I, I just want to read off the rip. I want to read you just a little quick blurb from the reception perception profile on here. and off the rip. Uh, Burton is a separation machine in one on one situations. His success versus coverage scores are pretty remarkable among the players on the side of the time of with this profile. Both Burton's success rate. Versus man and press coverage scores are top three in the class in those respective metrics. Those marks above the 85th percentile against press specifically. He trails only Roma Dunze and Marvin Harrison, and that is some lofty company. So there's a lot of really, really good metrics, a lot of really good uh, stats, and the film is, is pretty solid as well. Not to say that I've done all my film on Burton because I didn't, you know, this is, this is why... I can only do so much before the draft, and now you now you double back and, and go relook at some of these guys and 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 more of a magnifying glass of and, and really really get uh, deep inside that and and see uh, what you like. 
Um, I am delivered. <laughs> but Burton is, is going to be a riser. He is connected to an elite asset at the quarterback position, and the, the, the T. Higgins is very much up in the air. So Burton, I think, is going to be screaming up these charts. Uh, Tyler Boyd is, is, is out of there. So yep. Burton has, has a real clear path to – Coming in there and making some real noise in, in Cincinnati, in the jungle, as they say over there. Who uh, that? And he was he was a four four from our previous ADP, so uh, mm-hmm. giant riser uh, right there. And we're gonna hit one more. There's there's plenty of other guys to be rising and, and buying and talking about, but you know my my guy over here wants to stay in, in a certain amount of time. Uh, doesn't want to give us stop giving away everything all at once. How much time you got, buddy? Oh, if you're if you're hanging out with us a lot. Um, yeah. I don't have as much time these days. You know? uh, so the last one, Big D's uh, guy, Jalen Polk, right? Now, I shouldn't say your guy, but you're a UW guy. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. rising up the ranks. I'll where, take him. Where, like, do, you, like where do you see, what do you like uh, about, about Jalen Polk and, and where could you see him kind of rising up to? Yeah, I mean, Polk, you know, I think uh, his pre, pre-ADP, his pre-draft was what, third round, fourth, uh, or late, late third, I believe. Is I'm kinda, pulling it up for you. Pull it up for everyone. Pull it up for all of us. Where is he at? Three seven. Thirty one overall. Superflex kids. Superflex. Okay. With the one QB, just, just knock them all down. Sixteenth round the- startup pick. That's changing. That is changing right there. Yeah, I mean he's he's you know, I think um pre draft, you know, uh McMillan, obviously Odunze was ahead of him. For me personally, but it wasn't like that far away. I feel like Polk is one of those uh, wide receiver three flex plays that, you know, not everybody loves to have on their team. I like to have because it's some steady points. I, I He probably has some wide receiver two upside. I don't think that he can. I, I don't think he's a wide receiver one potential, at least right now. He maybe could develop into that. I don't know. But my ceiling for him right now, just kind of off the cuff, would be a wide receiver two um, productions, you know, fantasy points perspective. More, th- more than likely, probably a wide receiver three. But a very solid asset. He's got the draft capital. He's in New England. Um, and, you know, we could say that he's he's a New England type type player, but – Obviously, there's a change in regime, but the fact that they took him as high as they did, they have to have, or, or you would think, they, they have a, a strong conviction as to why they're targeting him and where, where they want him. So I think it's, I yeah. think it's wheels up for Polk in, the, in, these, in these drafts. I think his startup ADP is going to jump up there. And, and like I said, he could very easily, I mean, he was capable watching him, watching games live at uh, Husky Stadium and also on TV. You could see he cause some fits out there oh, sure. you know he he's 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 a does, heck of a receiver does a lot of the dirty work which he i think a lot is, of the in, dirty is in new work. england as soon as you start doing stuff like that 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 receptor goes off in new england there the little buzzer starts ringing they're like hey what's up with that guy late breakout um, age but can, not good can do the dirty work can block a lot of film guys really liked him i was a mcmillan over polk draft capital suggests polk i, I still like mcmillan but Polk's wide open where McMillan's a little more buried. Um, yeah. And you, you got to respect that. And the door is really wide open for anyone to grab a hold of, of some good target share uh, in uh, New England. Now, is Brissett to start the year? Maybe. And then, you know, coming along with May, Polk and Baker are now uh, guys who are going to be brought along. And then you got Pop Douglas uh, in there as well. So who, the door is wide open to really grab a hold of who's going to be May's guy yeah. uh, that, that he really uh, can – do some damage and that's there. a good point i think that's that's part of the key as i believe uh patriots use like four or five um of their draft picks on skill positions so obviously they're um uh, offensive skill positions so obviously they're they're revamping that offense they're revamping what they want to do they want to make sure they have some uh some targets and some um nice spots for me to throw the ball to and and uh and who knows i mean if he becomes May's go-to guy because he just likes him. You know, the, the, those can change the stats pretty fast. And so, um, I I I really enjoy Polk. I won't say I love him, um, but I really really enjoy him. And and I definitely think his uh, uh, you know that that late probably middle to late second value is is right in there for me. So yeah, he went yeah, two they, seven in this last mock we just did. Yeah, and he was he was uh, pretty pretty late, like we said. Uh, and well, it's two nine. My bad. Yeah, no, he he he's he's certainly rising up. Like I said, doors doors wide open uh, for Jalen Polk. There, I believe they took some some offensive linemen. They took Jaheim Bell. They took Joe Milton, and and they took they took Baker. 
Uh, they took Javon Baker. Yeah, as well, May, so. Polk, Javon Baker, Milton, and Bell. So some skills seven. and some offensive linemen to boot. So really focusing on that offensive side of the ball. Right. And Polk seemingly going to be a big part of that. And I don't, certainly don't hate Polk. Didn't love him as much as McMillan. But hey, you got to be interested. Got to got to pique your interest here. So certainly, you know, buy 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 window is certainly a little open and interesting yeah. on, uh, on on Polk there. So all right, let's wrap this one up. And we got some negativity coming up. We got some fallers, some must avoids. Uh, so be sure to like, subscribe if you haven't watched that. Because I got a lot of problems out. with you people. That's right, George or uh, Frank. We got a lot of problems with you people. Uh, not necessarily these guys. We like these guys. Uh, and there's certainly going to be some more positivity. We'll figure out where all these guys go. I have um, a hunch that we might like some of the guys that are on the must avoid list too. But yeah, who knows? Uh, but. Be sure to keep it locked here. We got all sorts of rookie stuff coming your way. We're going to be talking about the veteran side of things. We're going to be hitting startups. We're going to be doing best balls now that the NFL draft is over. So come on over to the Patreon, the Discord. Those guys are going to get first access. We're going to do $5 ones. We're going to do $20 ones. We're going to be all over this place. we all over that shovel board. <laughs> we're going to be in a pool. <laughs> we're going to be in a clubhouse. We're going to be all over that shovel board. Let me get a five-star review. Just tap it on the iTunes and the Spotify. Hook your boys up. You think, Hook them up. You think you can keep me at a Del Boca Vista? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shout out to the uh, to the to Larry Late. David ending his run there mm. with, with the Curb Your Enthusiasm. Almost fixing the end of Seinfeld in his last episode. So make sure you go check out Curb Your Enthusiasm as well. Great, it's a, it's a great treasure. Show. Great treat. show. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back very soon. Keep it locked and loaded. Peace.